So I have fond memories of my childhood. One of my most treasured is of our family car. It was a Datsun KJR 051, brown in color. And it must have been spacious because all five of us, well-fed children, comfortably fit in it. It was an enabler. It took us places. It took us to church, took us to school, and at least once every year to the village for Christmas holidays. There is another reason that this memory is special to me, as does carbon dating, it scientifically establishes my age. I am among the ever-reducing number of Kenyans who can say they have experienced all four epochs of presidential rule in this country. Each of those eras has a story to tell on matters human rights. There's a common thread that runs through all of those, through the entire period. We can refer to it as the mirage of human rights. In a manner of speaking, I have ridden in all four vehicles. Let me tell you the story. In 1963, we, we boarded motor vehicle registration number Kenyatta 1 with much hope because the driver assured us that at the end of the journey, there would be no more Ujinga, there would be no more Pumbavu, and there would be no more Umaskini. No more illiteracy, no more ignorance, and no more poverty. In matters human rights, he was assuring us that we were going to enjoy the fulfillment of our economic, social rights. So it was. You know, there is nothing that can beat a ride in a brand new vehicle straight from the showroom. So it was that some passengers fully trusting the driver went to sleep. It was only those who remained alert that woke them from their slumber to let them know that the driver had apparently taken the wrong turn somewhere along the way. At first, they thought it was an honest mistake. And so they gently tapped the driver and asked him to turn around so that they would go back to the junction and take the right direction. To their surprise, he stepped on the accelerator and persisted in the wrong direction. They were now armed. And got agitated and asked him, Sir, you either turn around this vehicle or give us the keys so that we can drive this vehicle to its destination. His response? He threw them out of the vehicle and drove over them. Some died. Pio Gama Pinto, JM Karaoke. Some suffered great personal injury. Bildad Kagia, Priscilla Chalagat, JM Karaoke. The other passengers made a quick calculation and thought to themselves that the personal risk of speaking up was too high. And therefore, 
they feigned sleep and asked each other in low tones, was this just a mirage? Exit Kenyatta, enter Moi. We changed drivers. We did not change vehicles. We should have known when Moi, in assuming office, proclaimed that he would follow Nyayo or footsteps of his predecessor. It was not long before media was swarmed with images of this driver performing paternalistic duties. For instance, planting trees, giving free milk, attending church. Soon we felt the heavy hand of Fimbo Yanyayo when he responded harshly to those who dared criticize his regime. By this time, the ride was very bumpy. The human rights champions of this era refused to board motor vehicle Ken Moy. They challenged the driver and said, boss, make way, allow us to drive our own vehicles on this road. The response to them was that too many vehicles on Kenyan roads would create traffic congestion. We could only have one vehicle and one driver. Egged on by his chief legal advisor, Moy declared, egged on by his chief legal advisor, who stated that one basic tenant of the rule of law is that all are subject to the law except the head of state. Moy then decided to drive his vehicle at high speed on the wrong side of the road. Indeed, we would have gone over the cliff were it not for the human rights champions of that age. I will mention a few. Wangare Madai, Martha Karua, Martha Kome, Gibson Kamau Kuria. You know them, James Sorengo. It is these champions who wrestled the keys out of Moi's hands and gave them to Kibaki. So it was that we disembarked from motor vehicle Ken Moi and boarded motor vehicle Ken Moi in 2002. When he ascended to the presidency of this country, Kibaki was on a wheelchair, his neck in a brace, his arm in a sling, yet he was president of the most optimistic people. Our vision was now too big for a car. We got into a caravan. Only that in 2007, we hit a bump. I suspect we damaged our sump guard. But you know, when you are chasing a mirage, you do not allow reality to slow you down. So we got into a flurry of activity, culminating into the promulgation of the Constitution of Kenya 2010, which by all estimates is a progressive constitution. At the heart of it, you have a very robust Bill of Rights. The activity included mushrooming of commissions all over the place. The National Gender and Equality Commission, the Truth, Justice, and Reconciliation Commission, the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights, the Commission on Administrative Justice, all these commissions got engaged in producing reports. The reports 
were not totally useless. They were dust collectors. Another mirage, accept and move on. Exit Kibaki, enter Kenyatta too. It is not all gloom. Right now, we all have cars. We are all drivers. If you live in Nairobi, you will agree with me that traffic in Nairobi should be recognized as the ninth wonder of the world. Because of this gridlock, we are unable to fully enjoy the benefits of owning cars. Read, enjoying our human rights. So we are hooting to the driver in chief and asking him, boss, to a jam. It is then that we realize he is suffering from a slow puncture on his vehicle. Read, massive corruption. The Israelites, we are told, wandered in the desert for 40 years before they entered the promised land. Kenyans have been wandering for 56 years. Now I suppose would be a good time to ask ourselves how long before we get home. Back to Datsun 120Y. With the benefit of hindsight, this to me is the age of zero consciousness. I was cruising in the back of a motor vehicle. It was someone's responsibility to fuel the car, ensure it had gas, and on occasion, make sure that I had meals when I was traveling with those wheels. I do not have the courage, neither the time, to tell you in great detail about how my parents exercised autocratic authority within that vehicle. They made critical decisions. For instance, when and where we would be making bathroom stops. Are you, as I was, a passenger without voice? Thank you.